as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Praise the Lord. Welcome again, my dear viewer, into our today's program. Always looks forward to speaking with us about the goodness of the Lord. My name is Mary Rose Minor. I am born again. I love Christ as my Lord and Savior. It is an honor to be called a child of God. It's not easy to make a decision for Jesus, but it is important. Because in this day and time, we are living in very perilous times. And it's only in God that we can find refuge. Because Psalms 91, I can briefly read as we start speaking in this program about the goodness of the Lord. There is a benefit when you hide yourself in the Lord. Because only in the Lord can you find sobriety. Only in the Lord will you have peace. Only in Jesus, dear viewer, will your life be transformed. And so the word of God is telling us or encouraging us in Psalms 91 that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I'll say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. So dear viewer, welcome I welcome you to have a desire in your heart to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And it's only in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ can you hide yourself because the word of God tells us that we are hid in Christ in God. And so we are seeing that the secret place must be fellowship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so I welcome you into that space where you will be hidden and you will be able to speak as, as the psalmist said confidently that he's abiding under the shadow of the Almighty because he has found a place, a secret place in the Lord. Hallelujah. And so you are going to have God as your fortress as your strength. And so even as we continue in the program, let's cover this program in our word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you. How we glorify your holy name. Each minute, each moment. Lord, is a, is a moment of worshiping you and declaring your goodness. We invite you, Holy Spirit, into this program that you may have full preeminence that even as I speak may I decrease and may Jesus increase we thank you Lord we bless you it's always an honor Lord to serve you because Lord you served us first you gave us your son to come and die for us on the cross. And so, Father, even as we serve you in the kingdom, Lord, it's an honor, it's a privilege. And I humble myself before you. Because your word tells us, humble yourself in the mighty hand of God. Under that mighty hand. 
and you'll be blessed. So, Father, I pray for, the dear, uh, for my viewer, my dear viewer, that you are going to give them a hearing ear. You're going to give them, Lord, seeing eyes that will see that which, Lord, you're calling them unto. May the spiritual eye, their spiritual eyes, be opened, O oh God. May their spiritual understanding be enlightened by your word to receive that which, Lord, you're calling us and calling them into because you are a good God. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Hallelujah. Welcome again, my dear viewer. I'm so excited today to know that the Lord is on our side. And if God be on our side, who can be against us? Hallelujah. And so in the previous program, we were seeing of how it is important for us to be standing in the position in the gate of our generations. Because we saw that in Ezekiel, God is looking for a people that are somebody, just one person. He's saying he's looking for one person. That they may be able to build the wall and stand in the gap before the land. And we saw that God is looking for that one person. It could be you, if you're willing, dear viewer. And we saw that when you, you, you're willing, God is going to, help to, to make you a vessel that will build the walls of our generations, of the gap. There is a gap, and I, I, I attest to that. There's a gap between the rich and the poor. There's a gap between those that are sick and those that are well. It, there is a gap. For those that are working and those that are not working, there is a gap. There's always a gap. And the Lord is calling us to be in that gap, in the gate of that gap, and taking the position of allowing God to build through us. Because all he's doing is looking for a person, a man, a vessel that he can use so that he does not destroy a generation. And we saw that the generation of a righteous man in the previous program is blessed according to the word of God in Psalms 112 and verse 2. And now that because we have introduced to ourselves about a man, God is seeking for a man. We saw that healing comes through repentance according to the word of God in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. That if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I shall hear from heaven and I shall heal the land. That is what the Lord is promising us. We just need to be in that space that God is calling us to be in the gap. Praise the name of the Lord. And so in this program, there are a few things I need us to understand about generations and why it is important for us to stand in there, in that gap, in that gate, taking position in that gate. Because our, 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 our title, my title of, the, of, the, of my message is guarding your position at the gate. You could be a doctor. You could be a nurse. You are a gatekeeper. You could be a pilot. Always remember you are a gatekeeper. Because you're the one who's in charge of that plane. And you're in charge of so many souls the Lord has given you. And Mark you, those are the, the, the people that are your passengers. Dear pilot, you could be listening. I want to submit to you that those are generations, many, 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 many generations that the Lord has entrusted you. 
And so it's always good to have fellowship with the God that has already given you responsibility to carry those passengers, to take care of them. You're carrying souls that are, some are born again, some are not born again. Some are sick, some are not sick. It is good to arise as a gatekeeper or pilot. Arise early and pray. As you commit your way, as you commit your family into the, into thy, uh, the hands of God, always remember the passengers that you're carrying because they're important to God, because they are generations. And God is always looking out and watching out for generations. And we are going to be looking at the word of God in, generation, uh, uh, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4. And you will see that generations did not just appear. It is God who created them. And the word of God is saying in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4 that these are the generations of the heavens and the earth. So it's not just a generation of man. Generations are there for the heavens and the generations are there for the earth. And so we, we are seeing that it is important for God about generations, even the elements of the earth. They are important to God. And so when we talk about man that God created, be sure that is most, most, most interested in the generations of man. And so even as we have been called to be gatekeepers, wherever we are, because as we are guarding the position at the gate, always, always remember that God is calling us to being a faithful gatekeeper. Someone that has already been worked on, on by God a vessel that has already been approved by God. For in a, in a, in a, in a large house, there, there are many vessels. There's, there are vessels of wood, of clay. And if a man cleanses himself and is ready to be used by the Lord, it is God that is going to work in them and through them and for them to bring blessing into generations to come. And so going back to our text in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4, we are saying that these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth. And the heavens. Hallelujah. This is beautiful, dear viewer. That a generation was started for the heavens and for the earth. And when did it start? Immediately in that very day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And so, dear viewer, I want you to understand that the God who cares about generations is the very God that once a child has already been born and it, the, the, ch the baby is in their day one, I submit to you that a generation has already been released. Hallelujah. And so it is important what kind of a generation that child is going to bring forth? Is it going to be a generation that is going to please the Lord to bring goodness and love and mercy and grace and deliverances? Or is it going to be a generation of curses, of bondage, of sicknesses, and finally destruction? And that is why the Lord is seeking for a man. One person the Lord is seeking. 
that they may stand in the gap. You are in a, in, in a family setup. God is looking for a watchman in that, in that family. Because if you do not agree to that, you'll be that child that the Lord started a generation, the baby that has just been born, just the way the heavens and the earth were created by God in one day, and a generation started. That is the word of God. And the word of God is flawless. It has already been tested seven times. And so when we allow the word of God that is flawless, and it is already tested, it's a sure foundation in our lives that as we continue to trust in the word of God, as we continue to standing in the gap, because we will see later in, in, in the programs to come that you cannot just stand in the gap without being equipped. God will always equip us. But number one, he will equip us with his word because his word is flawless. His word is forever. It is eternal. And so may we be found in that gap willing to have the word of God, willing to, to, to have prayer in our lives because prayer is a treasure. It's like that treasure that a man found in a land, in a field. And he took that treasure, he hid it again because in prayer there's a lot of hiding. And that is why I'm saying it is a treasure. Maybe we can look at um, Matthew 16. We see that in that treasure, when the man found it, he hid it. And as he hid it, he went away. Because in prayer, you will hide and speak the word. You speak the word of God. You hide the word of God in the spiritual realm as you speak. And you will anyway, I'm not, I'm not seeing the, script, uh, the, the verse, but it's in 16. When you hide the word of God in prayer, this man is going away and then he's coming back. And he has come back with having uh, uh, sold everything else he had to come and buy this one piece of field because there is treasure there. I want to submit to you, dear viewer, that finding Jesus Christ is like finding treasure. When you find Jesus Christ and you hide him in your heart, because in Revelation 3, 6, it's saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If one opens their door, their, the door of their hearts to Jesus Christ, he comes in, he makes a board with you. And you can imagine when God comes into you, your heart. You allow him. You open the gate of your heart. You guard the position of your heart by allowing Jesus to come in. You can imagine how things transform. Some of us were found by the Lord when we were just like babies without knowing uh, or even being able to tell our, our left leg from the right one. But the Lord just came. And he's transforming us day by day. Hallelujah. And so, as we look at the, the word, the prayer, the, the gap, being in the gap, and relating it with prayer that has become treasure, and that treasure is Jesus Christ. And we are taking Jesus, we are allowing Jesus 
to come. And we're hiding him in our hearts. It will be Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. God is going to give you confidence. I remember I used to be very shy. I could not face the camera. But the Lord came in. And so I would invite you to come and have Jesus, allow Jesus to come into your heart and transform you, give you peace, give you joy, and allow you to walk circumspectly. That you will be able to walk properly according to Romans 13. The Lord is calling us to walk properly. You cannot be able to walk properly. Without Jesus, you surely stumble. Yes, you could be feeling you are successful. You could be running a mega business. It is okay and it is good because God is the one who will always cause rains to rain. Whether you are born again or you are not, he will allow rain to come to you. He could have allowed the rain of blessings, the rain of wealth, to come to you. But I want to submit to you. You can add the ingredient of the Lord Jesus Christ, of salvation. Because it is Jesus that will come and equalize everything. It is only in Jesus Christ. Once you receive him as your Lord and Savior, he will forgive your sins. He will heal you. You are his land. He is going to heal the land as you stand in the gap as you allow him at the gate of time in the position that he has already given you, whoever you are, wherever you are serving, then God is going to bless and transform your life and restore you. You could be a king. You could be a prince. We all need Jesus. And we cannot wish that away. Because soon and very soon, he'll be coming for the church. He'll be coming for the people. That has been waiting. It's not easy waiting on the Lord. It's not easy. Being a Christian, Paul writes and says, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. It's to desire to walk in that narrow path. But as you walk in that narrow path, and the Lord is guiding you, guiding you because he's the great shepherd. David says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not be in want. And so I welcome you, dear viewer, to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And kindly repeat after me. Give Jesus a chance to walk through your life. And there's many, many things that are not clear in your mind right now. But when you receive Jesus Christ, everything becomes new. For the old will go and the new will come. It is the Holy Spirit that will do that, uh, that work because it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Holy Spirit. That is what the Lord is saying in the book of Zechariah, chapter 4. Just give Jesus a chance. Repeat after me kindly. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner. In need of a savior, I repent of my sins. Wash me, cleanse me. Sanctify me. Make me your child. Restore dignity in my life. Give me another chance. To transform my life. To give meaning to my life. Forgive me. Wash me with thy precious blood. The blood that you shed for me at the cross. Cleanse me, Lord. Thank you. That you have made me your child. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. How I thank you, Lord Jesus. I deny Satan out of my life. And I say I'll no longer follow Satan. I'll follow you, Jesus Christ. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
and delete my name in the book of condemnation and hell. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. So uh, let me pray for you, dear viewer. You could be there and you're not feeling well. Or you're trusting God for a job. Let's believe God for the same. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you. We want to give you praise, honor, and glory because indeed you are a good God. Thank you for my viewer that has given their lives to Christ. The Lord, you may walk with them. How we pray that you walk with them, that you sanctify them, that you change their lives. Father, those that are not well, those that are not feeling well, those that are having mental breakdown, Lord, won't you, won't you stretch out your hand and deliver them, that they too may glorify your holy name. Father, you have worked in my life. You can also work in our viewers' life to transform them and to make them into the children of God. Father, we thank you. Those that are trusting you, Lord, for a job, won't you call out a job for them? In Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise. We give you honor. And we glorify you. Amen. Dear viewer, may you look for a Bible-believing church. You're born again now. Hallelujah. You are a child of God, and nothing can change that if only you are willing, because nothing is impossible with God. He'll walk with you if only you allow Jesus to do a work in you and allow the Holy Spirit to walk with you. God bless you. Amen.